When thinking of measuring gender inequalities in agriculture and rural development, a specific set of indicators is needed. This is the reason why the FAO Regional Office for Europe and Central Asia, responding to the data needs identified by member countries, has developed a core set of gender indicators for agriculture and rural development, using SEGA as a framework. What is SEGA? The FAO, in the effort to assist its member countries, proposed a simple unified methodology to guide the collection and analysis of gender-sensitive data in agriculture, the Socioeconomic and Gender Analysis Approach, or SEGA. This framework allows a better understanding of rural women's and men's situation and consists of a set of practical tools to support field workers, development planners and policy makers in the incorporation of a socio-economic and gender analysis in their work. What is the core set of general indicators for agriculture and rural development? The core set of general indicators for agriculture and rural development includes 18 indicators useful to guide the collection of sex disaggregated data in agriculture for a basic gender analysis of the sector. They are framed by the six basic SEGA questions. 1. Who does what? 2. Who owns what? 3. Who has access and controls what? 4. Who knows what? 5. Who benefits? And 6. Who should be included in development programmes? All indicators respond to the SEGA question number six and one or more of the other SEGA questions. The first six indicators are the following. 1. Distribution of holdings by sex of the holder. 2. The average size of the holder's household by sex of the holder. 3. The average age of the holder and his her household members by sex of the holder. 4. The percentage of holdings with hired labour by sex of the holder. 5. The percentage of holdings with the risk of food shortage by sex of the holder. And 6. The percentage of holdings with holders' education over a certain level by sex of the holder. Indicators 1, 4, 5 and 6 help to identify hidden discrimination on women, making evident gender differences in the access to holdings, external labour, food and education. Making a special reference to education, gender parity at primary and secondary school levels has been generally achieved in Europe and Central Asia. However, in some rural areas, enrolment, school attendance and completion rates of girls is still lower than that of boys at all school levels, including as well as vocational and specialised education. 7. The percentage of holdings received agricultural extension services by sources of the services and sex of the holder. Women may have limited access to extension services and benefits if the holdings are registered in the name of their husbands or other male relatives. Sometimes these extension services are very important sources of knowledge, credit, technology and privileges. Limited access to these services therefore can hinder the number of opportunities a person can have in agriculture and entrepreneurship in rural areas. 8. Percentage of holdings participating in farmer organisations and cooperatives by sex of the holder. Few countries in Europe and Central Asia have readily available data on this indicator and existing data are usually not sex disaggregated. This example of a questionnaire model is taken from the FAO AgriGender Toolkit, available on the FAO website, and it allows for the collection of gender-sensitive data on the associations of household members and farmers' organisations, as well as the type of assistance received, the size of loans received and the purpose for which the loans were granted. Disaggregation by the sex of the holder can illustrate the gender gap in membership and related benefits. The indicators from 9th to 12th included in the core set refer to 9. Average area of holding by land use type and sex of the holder 10. Average number of livestock by species and sex of the holder 11. Average area of forest and other wooded land as primary land use by sex of the holder and 12. Average area of aquaculture by sex of the holder these indicators are useful to better explore the gender gap in rural women's and men's access to land and other productive resources. Discriminatory practices related to land and other forms of critical assets largely determine women's economic dependency and vulnerability. For example, the lack of land hinders their access to credit. Collecting data on livestock is important, as they are considered central to the survival of the rural poor in some areas. Continuing with the list of indicators, 13. Percentage of holdings with irrigated land by land use type and sex of the holder. 
14. Percentage of holdings using chemicals by type of chemicals and sex of the holder. And 15. Percentage of holdings with selected machinery and equipment by sex of the holder. The resources highlighted by these indicators are important for agricultural productivity and women's lack of access to them contributes to the underperformance of agriculture. The modules seen here were extracted from the Agricultural Census Questionnaire for the Republic of Moldova. Table 1 shows some demographic data collected about the human capital of the agricultural holder, while Table 2 demonstrates the ownership of different types of equipment and machinery. Disaggregation of the sex of the holder allows us to understand differences in ownership of machinery between women and men. The final three indicators of this set are 16. Percentage of holdings receiving credit for agricultural purposes by sex of the holder. 17. Percentage of holdings by type of farming, crop, temporary, permanent, livestock, aquaculture and forestry and sex of the holder. 18. Percentage of holdings with other gainful activity in the household by type of activity and sex of the holder. These indicators relate to the type of farming undertaken by female and male holders and total income of the holder's household including all income sources. Most of the data needed to inform these indicators can be obtained from the agricultural census and from specialised surveys of forestry and aquaculture and sometimes also from the Living Standards Measurement Survey, Labour Force Survey, Household Consumption Survey and Household Budget Surveys. What other data can be used to complement this core set of gender indicators for agriculture and rural development? Other FAO resources related to the production of gender statistics in agriculture and rural development are the FAO Agri-Gender Database, a toolkit for the production of gender-sensitive agricultural data, the FAO Gender and Land Rights Database, which provides information about limitations that women experience in access to land, and the FAO Legislation Assessment Tool, which offers 30 indicators for measuring progress towards gender equity in land tenure in national policy and legal frameworks. All of them, inclusive the core set presented in this toolkit, are available at www.fao.org gender. All these resources are steps forward towards an improved understanding of women and men's situation in rural areas, since revealing the true gender gap in agriculture is the first important step in achieving the empowerment of women and gender equality.